Hi everybody, I thought I'd share our story for today. So today I thought I'd read Wilfred to the rescue. Let's have a look at what happens. It had been raining for three days and three nights in Bramley Hedge. Wilfred's friend Primrose had come over to play. Rain, 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 grumbled Wilfred. Is it ever going to stop? That night there was a wild storm. When Wilfred and his dad went out the next morning, they stared in astonishment. Where's the field gone? Wilfred asked. By my whiskers, the water's almost up to the house, said, the, said his dad. The stream must have burst its banks. After breakfast, Wilfred splashed over to Primrose's house. He found her watching as a basket boat was unloaded. It's the bowls explained Primrose. Their home is flooded and they've got nowhere to stay. Oh dear, that's not good is it children? The Vole children were called Horace and Sissy. Are you going to sleep at our house? Primrose asked. Don't know, shrugged Horace. Primrose's dad said that everyone would stay with them until the flood went down. Wilfred helped to fetch food supplies for the from the store stump on his dad's raft. They brought back blackberry buns, cheeses and hazelnuts. Can you see that, children? Let's be back. That evening, they all, they all crowded into the dining room for a wonderful feast. Later, Primrose suggested playing a game of hide and squeak. Mind you look after Sissy, Mrs Vole told Horace. While Horace counted to ten, everyone ran off to hide. Come in, ready or not, called Horace excitedly. Horace found Wilfred and Primrose quite easily. But I can't find Sissy anywhere, he said. We'll help you look, offered Wilfred. Sissy had found a perfect hiding place in the basket boat under her mum's green umbrella. For a long time she waited. The boat bobbed gently on the water, making her sleepy. Suddenly, Sissy woke up. The boat seemed to be moving. Peeping out, she saw that the rope had come loose. The boat was drifting. Mum! Sissy cried, but the wind carried her small voice away. Oh no, look, she's all on her own. Oh, poor Sissy. Back at the house, Horace, Wilfred and Primrose had searched every room. She's run off, said Horace crossly. Wilfred was staring outside. That's odd, he said. Where's your boat gone? Horace turned pale. Do you think Sissy took it? Horace hid under the bed and wouldn't come out. Go away, he said. But what about Sissy? She could be in trouble, urged Primrose. Wilfred tried to think. You could take the raft. She can't have gone far. Will you come too, Wilfred? Asked Horace in a small voice. Primrose reluctantly agreed to stay behind in case Sissy turned up. As dusk fell, Wilfred pushed the raft off from the landing. Rain was falling again and muddy water swirled around them. Wilfred steered whilst Horace called, Sissy, into the gloom. Oh dear, look, it's going dark. Dear. Alone in the boat, Sissy clung to her mum's umbrella. She could no longer see the warm lights of the house. She was cold and lost. The current made the boat spin dizzily. An old weeping willow trowed its branches in the water. As the boat drifted by, Sissy tried to grab hold, but she leaned too, out too far. The boat tipped up and splash! She tumbled over the side. Oh no, sounds dangerous, doesn't it? On the raft, Horace and Wilfred's throats were sore from calling Sissy's name. Wilfred pointed at something on the water. Look, what's that? Mum's umbrella, said Horace. See if you can reach it. As it bobbed past, 
Wilfred managed to catch the umbrella and draw it in. Something was curled up inside, a small, wet ball of fur. It blinked at them in surprise. Sissy, cried Horace. Oh, look, she fell into the brownie. Lucky it was there. Back at home, Primrose had explained everything. Mrs. Vole cried so much that she needed to borrow three hankies. Outside in the dark, tiny lanterns searched up and down. Look, cried Primrose, a light on the water. The light drew closer until finally they could see the raft. On it were Horace and Sissy, with Wilfred steering them safely home. A great cheer went up from everyone. A little later, they all toasted crumpets round the kitchen fire. Horace told everyone that he was probably the bravest vole in the world. Wilfred bit into another crumpet. The thing about rescuing, he said, is it makes you very hungry. Dear, he worked up quite an appetite, didn't he, children? Did you enjoy that? I hope you did, and I'll see you soon. Bye.